Hi everyone, welcome back to Noble Nomad and welcome back to a nice short little book review for Adelaide Writers Week. So I have read St Stone Sky and Gold Mountain by Mirandi Rivero. This is a really short, really succinct, beautifully written book about two mi uh, migrant uh, siblings from China who have come over to Australia during the 1850s, 60s for the gold rush up in Queensland and it's absolutely fascinating to really understand their story so they go very divert paths quite quickly so they start off together um, there's Yi who's the sister she is hiding her identity as a woman um, dressing as a man because obviously women couldn't really technically mine or get licenses to dig um, uh, for gold at the time prospect um, but men could so she's basically disguised herself as a man to assist her brother she gets sick quite quickly and so he basically removes them from the gold fields where they had like their little tiny little allotment that was given to them by a syndicate and um, she starts working for a store um, owner and who sells different um, groceries and things like that to the actual gold mining town and because he, they can no longer dig for gold the brother Lai Yu actually goes on an overland expedition he gets like roped into going um, in the outback into inner Queensland um, basically to help a sheep farmer and you get to see his destination thrown into the mix is a, a woman who was born in Australia she is not technically a fallen woman she's not a prostitute but she works for a prostitute and she's got a bit of like stain on her character background because she once had a child and um, the child was given away so she has her memories that what brought her to this place as well but also her closeness with a prostitute and understanding the men and the women and how they treat people in the gold mining towns. So I forgot to say her name is Miriam. Um, anyway, so what is absolutely fantastic and what I loved about this book is that the two women, Miriam and Ying, come together. They have this kind of like friendship that they bring together. And whilst Miriam is of the idea that she's making friends with a Chinese man, Ying is very much exploring her own, like, her own potential, her own future, her own choices. Like she's always would have been so confined to what she could and could not do in China. And she suddenly finds this incredibly freeing sense of escape. And um, in not only being a man, but being in Australia, being away from traditional customs. So it is absolutely beautiful. So the two women in this story always hold on to this idea of hope and that they just get this absolutely amazing story. And like there is danger, there is, you know, heartbreak in their story, but there is this underlying thread of hope that always kind of glimmers. It's like that thread of gold almost in their story. On the other hand, her, um, Ying's brother Lai Yu, he is always holding on to the past. So he believes that he is haunted by the spirit of his um, dead betrothed, well, kind of like fiance. Um, and she is basically always, you know, second guessing his decisions and also always ridiculing him. It was t telling him when he would be ridiculed. And so all these like situations are happening and he's always thinking of how he would have been perceived back in China without really exploring what freedoms and what restraints he has in this new country. So it is absolutely beautiful and it's amazing to read because there's so much of Australian history and especially Australian like gold mining history that is so heavily unexplored because you have like the Eureka Stockade which is like a big rebellion that happened in the Victorian gold mines um, or gold fields I should say but that's it there's like next to nothing and so you have the women's voices and then you have the migrant voices and so many people were involved in the gold rush it was such a huge human traffic migration around the world for these gold rush places that it really redefined the you know the moving forward what the population looked like so it's just so fascinating to have a book that's wholly dedicated to the gold fields but from minority voices so highly recommend i really thoroughly enjoyed this read if you've read um i think it's um these hills have gold or will these hills have gold how are these hills have gold I can't quite remember the name, but um, I'll put it down here, obviously. Um, but it's similar, but I feel like it might be quite different because this one's very much internal 
and it's very much of these two women's stories really even though the brother is in there it's the two women's stories predominantly so thank you all for joining me i hope you have a wonderful time happy reading and i'll see you next time for another book review okay bye